This program is brought to you in part by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. Confession of God's Word, speaking in agreement with what God said, will cause your mind to be renewed so you can think like God thinks. This in turn will cause you to talk like God talks, and then eventually talking like God talks will cause you to walk like God walks without fear, without anxiety, in victory instead of defeat. And your mind is being renewed when you do that. Download and stay connected with the Changing Your World podcast with Creflo Dollar. Keep the Word of God at the forefront of your mind with these powerful and uplifting messages. With each message that you download and stream, you gain revelation of the fullness of God's grace. The Changing Your World podcast brings you life-changing wisdom right at your fingertips, no matter where you are. Subscribe today on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your preferred podcast platform. This is your world, so let's vow to make it a better place. Let every heart that needs to know your love is here to stay. Ooh, it's time we live a new life. Ooh, let us love shine bright in you. We're saved by His grace, so we embrace your love today. God is a faith God, and that's my Heavenly Father. And I want to be a faith kid, if you will. He's a faith God. We're the children of God. I want to be a faith child. I want to imitate Him. And I want to imitate Him in that He had something in His heart, He released it with words, and He saw what He made. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 1. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 1. You see, to imitate God, you must talk like Him and act like Him. That's so very important. He says, be ye therefore followers of God or imitators of God as dear children. So if we're going to be followers of God and imitators of God, then we talk like Him, we act like Him. Now, He would not ask you to do something you're not capable of doing. Imitate me, follow me. He wouldn't ask you to do that if you were not capable of doing it. So if he is speaking and out of his heart what he believes, having no doubt in his heart, he's expecting for his children to imitate him, just like Jesus imitated him. Jesus operated in the faith principles of, of Mark chapter 11, 23. He operated in the faith principle of Matthew 17, 20, those two scriptures we just read. Jesus operated that while, like that while he was on the earth, and he's our example to follow. He spoke the word. You remember? He spoke to the wind. He spoke to the sea. He spoke to demons. He spoke to the fig tree. He even spoke to a dead man. Wow. The wind, the sea, the tree, the demons, and even the dead were obedient to what he said. Now, that's authority that Jesus operated on this earth as a man walking on this planet, and, and the Scripture is saying in Ephesians, imitate him. And Jesus began to demonstrate how to walk in that authority, and he spoke to all those things, and all those things lined up and they obeyed what he said. He operated in the God kind of faith, believing in your heart, saying it with your mouth, seeing it and experiencing it in your life. I tell you, it's a good time to learn how to operate in this authority. It's a good time to learn how to use the, the Word of God and load your mouth with the Word of God and watch it bring some things to pass in your life. Now, Jesus was imitating his father and getting the same results that his father got. Man, that's what I believe should happen to every born-again Christian. We should be imitating our father and getting the same results that Jesus got. But I, that's why I'm teaching this tonight. I think you have to come to a place of gathering some understanding 
so that you'll know how to operate in this authority. Let, let me give you three points right here I think will help you. First of all, these principles of faith, they are based on, watch this, spiritual laws that you can execute. That's a part of your authority. You, you have the authority to execute spiritual laws. Uh, when there's a law on the book and you see a policeman in the street hold his hands up, then he has, a, he has authority by that uniform to hold his hands up and, and, and they obey him. Well, we are believers. Praise God. We have the, 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 the authority of Jesus Christ and we have the right to execute spirit law while we're on this physical planet. So that's number one. Number two, they work for who, whosoever will apply these laws. If you don't apply these spiritual laws, you have what you say, speak unto a mountain, death and life are in the power of the tongue. If you don't exercise these spiritual laws, I mean, come on, guy. Come on, dude. Come on. You, 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 what are you expecting? You're not exercising spiritual laws, then you're not going to, to see results. And then here's the third point. You get them in motion by the words of your mouth. You get all of these spiritual principles that you have invested in your authority. You get these things working when you, when you load them in your mouth. When you begin to speak these words, you set in motion those spiritual laws. You see, he sent his word and it healed them. That when, he, when, when, when the voice was given to his word, he set in motion healing. When the voice was given to the word of your success, you set in motion success. When the voice was, was given to the, the principle of deliverance, you set in motion that deliverance and you begin to see things happen. Spoken words by Christian people are very, very powerful. These are things that, you know, we should be hearing taught a whole lot in churches and it's just not happening anymore. We, we got to be careful not to go to a political gospel. And we've got to teach Christian people how to operate and use their authority while they're on this, uh, while they're on this earth. So spoken words program your spirit either to success or defeat. Spoken words. So what are you speaking? Whatever you're speaking, you're programming your spirit. If you're speaking all the wrong words, then you're programming your spirit to that wrong. But if you're speaking all of God's words, you're programming your spirit to success, you're programming your spirit to the spiritual things. Words, listen, are containers. Words are containers. They are spiritual containers. They carry faith or they carry fear. And they produce after their kind. Look at Romans 10, 17. Words are spiritual containers. So everything I'm teaching you about the Word of God right now if you take words and load fear in them and you load disaster in them, then those words which are spiritual containers, first of all, it programs your spirit to defeat and it carries that fear and it produces after its kind. So everything I just said to you about the Word of God, take the opposite of it and it produces some of the stuff you're going through right now. Where, where, where is all of the oppression coming from? Where is all of the depression coming from? Where is all of the, you know, failure mentality coming from? The suicidal ideations. If I guarantee you, you back up and, and you take a look at what you've been saying. If you back up and check out what's been coming out of your mouth, then you will locate the seeds that's responsible for where you are right now. Romans chapter 10, 17 says, So then faith cometh how? by hearing, and hearing by what? The Word of God. So what happens is right now you're hearing the Word of God. Faith is coming because I am preaching the Word of God. You are hearing the Word of God. You know, when I preach on what grace is made available to you and what Jesus has already done, faith comes, and then you can use your faith to take possession of that faith that has come. I now heard it, I hear it. You know, the Bible says that... Uh, they did not prosper or have profit because the word that was preached, the word that was preached was not mixed with faith. Uh, that's in the book of, of Hebrews chapter 4 and 1. 
it didn't profit them. In fact, let's go there. He Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1. It, you know, you can hear the Word, but if it's going to have profit in your life, you've got to hear the Word and, and believe it. It's got to be mixed with faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the, by the Word of God. So it's not enough just to have the Word preached to you. That Word preached has got, got to be mixed with faith. So let us therefore fear, lest the promise being left us of entering into his rest, that any of you should seem to come short of it. Verse 2, for unto us was the gospel preached, so the gospel's preached, as well as unto them it was preached. He says, but the word preached did not profit them. That's what's happening in a lot of churches. The word's being preached, but it's not profiting people. They're not getting any results. Why? Because it's not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. It's not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. So when I hear the word and I hear the truth, I mix it with faith. I begin to preach it. I begin to release it. I begin to speak the word, really to speak the word to myself, and then faith comes more quickly. Even when I, when I say it out loud, it's, speaking the word is a type of meditation. And when you meditate that word and ponder that word, you're depositing faith in your heart. And then one of those confessions is going to release power because you're releasing the faith that you finally have in your heart. So God's Word is creative power. God's Word is creative power. And that creative power is produced by the heart. It's formed by the tongue, and it's released out of the mouth in word form. So God's creative power is given to man in, in a word form. God, he took his creative power, dropped it in the container of his words, and he gave it to man. So we have the book of God's creative power. Yeah, we have the book of God's creative power, but it must be spoken by the body, the mouth. It's got to be spoken out of my mouth in order to be effective. God's Word is not void of power. Listen, God's Word is not void of power. God's people are void of speech. God's Word is not void of power. God's people are void of speech. In other words, there's nothing wrong with the seed. The problem is that, that God's people aren't speaking it. God's Word is not void of power. God's people are void of speech. You see, they hear the world and they speak as the world speaks. They even speak that which the enemy says and they destroy their own inheritance by corrupt communication of fear and unbelief. Listen to me carefully. No word of God is void of power, only powerless when it is unspoken. No word of God is void of power, only powerless when it goes unspoken. That's so, so strong. So again, like Taffy was saying a couple weeks ago, if God's made it available, man, you need to go ahead and pick it up and use it. You know, confess victory in the face of your apparent defeat. Confess abundance in the face of your apparent lack. So you're facing lack, so what are you going to say? i tell you what most people do. They face lack and they, they say something that keeps the lack there. Oh, dear God, I'm just as broke as the Ten Commandments that Moses dropped at the bottom of Mount Sinai. Well, now you did what you needed to do to maintain that lack. And so he says, in the face of that, then you speak abundance. Now, I remember Charles Capp saying this years ago. Charles Capp said, I, the, he said the Lord spoke to him, and he says, I have told my people they can have what they say, and they are saying what they have. He says, I told my people they can have what they say, but they keep saying what they have. See, you know, if you're sick, don't keep saying, I'm sick. Say, I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. You can have what you say, but you got to stop saying what you have. Now, are you saying what you have? Are you, the, are you the person that's continuing to say what you have and then you look into your life and you realize, oh, my God, I, I, I actually ha I have it. You keep saying I'm broke. You keep saying I'm broke, busted, disgusted. You, my people can have what they say, but they keep saying what they have. 
So that's, that's got to change. That's got to change. Now, I want to spend the last part of this teaching talking about seven primary reasons why confession of God's Word will work for you. It will work for you if you will work it. So here's the first reason that God's confessions will work for you. Confession of God's Word works, number one, because it is the way you sow seeds into the kingdom of God. The way you sow seeds, you know, on Sundays I've been talking about Mark chapter 5 and how the kingdom of God operates just like the farming system. He said the word of God is the seed, and he says the sower soweth the word. Well, now you see why. The word works because it is the way, confession of the word is the way that you sow into the kingdom of God. You sow words into the kingdom of God by saying. You know, Mark chapter 4, 26 and 27 uh, if you look over there, Mark chapter 4, 26 and 27, it says, And he said, So is the kingdom of God, as if a man should cast seed into the ground, and should sleep and rise night and day, and the seed should spring up and grow up, he knoweth not how. So here he's talking to us about this. I mean, if you're going to sow seed into the kingdom of God, it involves the confessing of the word. Sowing by the kingdom method of speaking the word will bring success in any area of your life. When you confess or when you speak God's word, you are sowing seeds. You're sowing the word seed. So Mark 4.26 says, the kingdom of God is as if a man should cast seed into the ground. And, and listen, you, how are you doing it? You're, you're, you're speaking it. So God doesn't, God doesn't sow the seed. Please understand that. God doesn't sow the seed. Man does it. And, and, and some people think, well, God's going to sow the seed. No, man sows the seed. God furnishes the seed, but you must sow them. So how do you sow it? You open your mouth up. You speak. I mean, that's, that's, that blesses me to, to begin to understand that we are getting this practical. If the kingdom of God works according to Mark chapter 5, you know what it involves? It involves me opening my mouth up and I sow the seed. Please remember, God's not going to sow the seed for you. God's not going to sow healing seed, deliverance seed, success seed. You have to do that. If you don't sow it, then you don't have anything in the ground. It's no different than a farmer who's trying to plant corn, but he sits at home all day watching, you know, Netflix, and, and he, he doesn't go outside and sow the seed. Ain't no way in the world he should show up during harvest time expecting to harvest seed. Why? Because he never sowed it. Is that, is that, is that the, the sum total of maybe what some of your lives are like? That you're sitting, waiting, where's God? Where's my manifestation? And, and you've not, you've not been aware that I'm the sower that's supposed to be sowing the seed. So that's so very important. Number two, here's the second reason I believe confessing God's Word works. Confessing of God's Word works. It works because it it causes faith to come. It causes faith to come. You speaking the word is setting the goal by sowing seeds in the kingdom of God within you. The Bible says the kingdom of God is within a man. And so it is also your words that cause faith to come, according to Romans 10, 17. So it can be in any area that you sow. You can, you know, physical healing, finances, spiritual matters. Speak what God said about you to yourself aloud. And then you declare it, and then you say it, and you confess it, and then faith comes. I mean, you're going to believe you before you believe what somebody else says. And like I said, meditate in the Word day and night getting that word in your heart, uh, getting it in the ground involves pondering. And one definition of meditation is to say it aloud. And when you speak that word aloud, you hear yourself saying it. And you know, the Bible says, guard your ears, your eyes, your mouth. Well, when you hear yourself saying it and you are saying it with your mouth, it's getting into the heart, the ground where it can grow. Here's number three. Confessing God's Word works because it renews the mind to the Word of God. It renews the mind to the Word of God. 
Do you realize that your mind didn't get born again when you were born again? Your mind didn't get saved when you got saved. Your spirit got saved, but your mind didn't get saved. The Apostle Paul said this, Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Here's what Paul said, Romans 12 and 2. He says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Another translation says, Be changed by the renewing of your mind. So Paul here is writing to believers. He's writing to the believers that were in the Roman church, and he instructed them to do something about their mind. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So, confession of God's Word, speaking in agreement with what God said, will cause your mind to be renewed so you can think like God thinks. This, in turn, will cause you to talk like God talks, and then eventually, talking like God talks will cause you to walk like God walks without fear, without anxiety, in victory instead of defeat, and your mind is being renewed when you do that. This is so, so very important. Number four, confessing God's Word works for you because it keeps the answer before you. That all of the things that are going on, the answer is kept right in front of you. So if you're always facing the problem, if you're always speaking the problem, if you're always praying the problem, then you'll have faith in the problem. But if you're always talking your problem to other people, and then you really do have a problem, if you go to the Lord and say, Lord, I have this problem, and I can't get rid of this problem, it's grow it gets bigger and bigger every day, Lord, then you will eventually have a big problem. But when you begin to renew your mind and begin to keep the answer before you by confessing the Word of God, you know, some people will say, well, oh, you're just ignoring the problem. On the contrary, you are doing something about the problem. When you get accused of ignoring the problem, you know, just, there's scriptures for that. In fact, just quote Philippians chapter 4, 6, and 8. And there'll be people say, you're just ignoring the problem. Philippians 4, verse 6 through 8, tell people this. When they accuse you, you're just ignoring the problem. You're just trying to act like the problem's not there. I'm, I don't want to keep rehearsing the problem. I want to put something in front of me that's going to get me out of the problem. And, and what's going to get me out of the problem is speaking the Word. Here's how you answer that. Philippians chapter 4, 6, and 8. Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, look what he says, think on these things. Not on the problem, think on these things. Keep the problem in front of you. And when you confess the Word, it's keeping the, the answer in front of you. Don't keep the problem in front of you. Excuse me, keep the answer in front of you. Don't keep the problem in front of you. Keep the answer in front of you. And when you confess God's words, you keep the answer in front of you. I think I got that right. Amen? Number five, here's the fifth reason we confess the Word of God, because it changes your heart. Look at Proverbs chapter 4, 20 and 23. We confess the Word of God because God's Word will change your heart. Somebody says, yeah, but I just don't understand. I said it one time. Man, you ain't going to get nothing doing it one time. That's just like saying you, 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 ate a, you ate a diet meal one time. I don't know why I'm still 400 pounds. I ate a diet meal. It ain't what you do one time that's going to be responsible for the change. It's what you're willing to do continuously. It's, it's consistency that's the key to the breakthrough. It, it, when you consistently keep the Word of God in your mouth and begin to speak the Word of God, it'll change your heart when you do that. Because remember, when you're, when you're speaking the Word, you're, you're dropping things into your heart.